Hey, what's going on? Uh, we're going to be showing you my great sword and blunderbuss loadout here that I ran the other day in M3 Savage Divide. The video will be coming out tomorrow. Uh, me running to, uh, through it, talking to you on what I'm thinking as I'm going through it, uh, what maybe you should take into the dungeon, uh, different philosophies and mindsets going into a public M3. Who the hell? What the? Yo, I got a boo thing here, bro. So what's up, girl? Hold on, bro. Anyways, uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so my Riz is strong this morning, baby. Anyways, I'm too old to be saying that. Let's get into the gear and enough with the bull S. So let me get into the uh, where you can see the gear sets here. I have two different gear sets that I run and you should in Savage and, and most dungeons you should have probably at least two. So the main mutation is nature. So I have nature gems and everything. Now I do have an opal here, but you still have enough protection. You'd be just fine. Cause I use that in this other set. It's the only ring that I have leeching thrust and hardy, which is surprising. I don't know. I just need to craft another one. Um, so I have all nature gear here and let's see here. Let's go over the gear. I have elemental aversion, refreshing and health really enchanted war would be better running the main dungeon part in my opinion but this is what I have to go with. You don't need the best gear in the world. Just learn how to run it. You'll be fine. Freedom to help get out of the uh, nature. Running the great sword, you want relentless freedom on one of your pieces of gear, but I don't have it yet. Enchanted ward, refreshing in health. And I didn't put health on these pants because at the time I think health was 50 grand, something like that, 60 grand. I was waiting for it to come at, down. I knew it would. And now I, I should probably upgrade it. I just don't want to spend another chromatic seal. It would help, but eh, it's not that important. Enchanted ward, refreshing in health. And then let's go over here. I got Serenity, which is my favorite weapon in the game. Uh, hit a 19.7 something thousand shot the other day. Mm, nice, very nice. Thanks. Yeah, um, I pro you probably saw my last video if you watched it. But that was, of course, with Oblivion down from the healer and everything else. So um, it can get up there in numbers, and I guarantee I can hit over 20K if I um, if I actually fully spec into it and get back in there. Everything that guy just says bullshit. Okay, so I found the blunderbuss that I was running. I bought one last night, which is this one over here. I have my new gear set, which is a Vicious Venturing Claw Shot and Keenly Jagged, which I've been wanting one of these for a while for that um, Venturing Claw Shot to get the 41% in power. Uh, I kind of wanted to test that out. Plus, I used to tank with the blunderbuss and uh, miss grappling around. But as far as what I did in the video, this was the one I ran. And it's Vicious, Keenly Jagged, Shirking Flames. Not the greatest, but it's just fine. And then what you need to run is the uh, Bio Bomb. I don't care if you have the blue version, just one of these two uh, you can go up to gold if you want and uh, but it does a you know single shot i think if you if you do the one that does 50 percent reduced healing which is really helpful on some enemies but this one is just fine overall you're still going to do 30 percent reduced healing for eight seconds so anytime the enemies right now uh, in, in savage divide die they drop a healing circle so the other enemies that are in it are healing constantly so what the tank wants to do is pull them out of the circle but you also want to have some anti-heal that you can put down to help you and the other DPS out because it is not all on the tank. So that's what you need to run. Make sure you have plenty of ammo because it, you could be in there for a while. So take plenty of rounds with you. Don't worry about the cost. You'll make that up later. Ambulance, nothing special. There's the ring. The ring, let me go over this real quick. I do have thrust. It's to help out the blunderbuss damage on times where I have to use a blunderbuss. You're going to be at empower cap with the serenity so you don't need the slash damage added it's not going to benefit you much if at all so that's why i have the thrust ring so there's that and earring refreshing toast and purified toast um i went ahead and went with it, it has intelligence but i went with it because purified toast i can get out of the nature which is uh, important since i don't have relentless freedom on the clothing and refreshing toast to help the cooldowns and then refreshing and but i'm over the uh, limit anyways let's get into the skill tree here for the great sword this is what i went with the abilities relentless rush skyward slash and roaring rupture 
So what I usually start off with is the Skyward Slash, and I'll add, you know, two stacks of 5% rent for 10 seconds. You don't need the Slam Down because you need the points other places. The Relentless Rush, well, I start off with the Skyward Slash, then I hit the Roaring Rupture, so let's go into this side. The Roaring Rupture is going to bring, well, if you have the points select underneath, it's going to bring the enemies in, almost like what a Great Axe would do with the Gravity Well. So you're going to try to bring the enemies closer in, and then you'll hit the L Relentless Rush to get into your end power. But let's go over the skill tree here. You're going to want these three points underneath. This is what's going to help bring them in. You can also push out foes if you want, but don't do that. The Shockwave is going to apply 10% weaken for 10 seconds, which is important. You want the extra bleed. And base damage increased by 3% for each Grave Sword buff on you. And so the reason that I take this right here is sometimes I get aggro from the enemy, especially if you're hitting really hard. It's very difficult now that we don't have beloved earrings to, you know, not get aggro, aggro away from the tank. A lot of the tanks, um, you know, it, it's very difficult to hold aggro now. I'll just say that. I don't want to. There's a lot of tanks in public lobbies I run into that taunt and think that that's going to hold threat. You had to, you have to put down damage as a tank to hold aggro. If if you taunt and just hide behind the shield, you will not hold aggro. But anyways, I like running this just so if I do get aggro, I can slam down with a roaring rupture, have a little bit of defense, take the enemy to the tank, let it re you know aggro to the tank, and then you can be on about your way. Charge heavy attacks do fifteen percent armor. Oh my god. 15% armor penetration. There we go. La la la. Onslaught stance. Uh, you have increased uh, critical, 100% uh, increased critical chance, which is good to go. So you're going to get base health back, regain stamina, critical crit chance increased by 10% when attacking foes with an active debuff. So we go down the relentless tree here, 10% end power. That's where it's going to be uh, big time. You definitely need that on there to get that going. Reduce abilities, cool down 50% when you kill an enemy with relentless rush. After dodging, gain 10% end power for the next three hits within 10 seconds. And then this one to reduce your uh, cooldowns. So that's what I went with on the great sword. Let's get into the blunderbuss. So this is the blunderbuss setup that I went with. And I will explain the blast shot. The blast shot will knock down the gorilla. So if you do catch aggro from the, one of the gorillas, it's going to provide some CC. Now it's not going to do anything to the iguanas or to the, um, you know, big uh, mammoths, but it will stun the gorillas. So it will also add Ren for 10% uh, for six seconds. This right here. Sometimes during the boss fights, the first boss fight, the gorilla might be on one side uh, of the arena and you have an element that you have to make sure you get the ring to disperse the glyph that you took down and you won't be able to go over there and do melee and pay attention to the ring. So having something that will do extra damage from 10 meters away is, is big time during the boss fights. So make sure you have that. That's 15% extra damage if you're 10 meters or further away. And yes, Splinter Bus can hit from that far, so do take advantage of that. I love the splitting grenade. You can go with Plague Splitting Grenade on a clothing item, and that will reduce the healing of the enemies throughout the dungeon even more. And that will help out the whole team on top of your Bile Bomb. It's also going to add fire damage with the exploding, uh, which I think the explosion does initial strike damage plus the fire damage. And then you got the Shrapnel Blast, which is going to add burn. And you can shoot this from, you know, plenty far away, up to 16 meters. Um, four additional pellets with each use. You just want to go all the way down the tree here, man. This is one of the best abilities. So also fires a little bomb. Now this bomb don't travel as fast as the other one, obviously. It just falls straight down. So um, if you're really close to enemies, this can also add a lot of extra burn. Some of these you just pick because you got to fill the skill, skill tree up to get to this. This is going to add extra two pellets. Um, so you're going to have eight instead of six. So what you want to do is use an ability, then a regular shot, then ability, then a regular shot, then ability. And then you switch to your great sword, you get into that. So that's why I pick these. This is uh, important. You want the increased damage. 
I'll show you how I use it though. So usually I'll start off with the grenade and then I'll shoot. And that way I have the eight pellets cause I did the shoot a shot after the ability leeching or the shrapnel blast, then a shot. And then I'll end off with that, which will apply the Ren. Then I'll get into the great sword skyward for extra Ren slam down to weaken. Also give you a little fortify and then the relentless rush for end power. And you just start swinging away. So that's what you want to make sure you do. Now you can get the ability if you want, um, instead of the 10, if you're going to be close up more often, instead of the, instead of the extra power, 15% extra power, 10 meters away. If you want to go with, uh, da, 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 where is it right here? Holding on to two ammunition after you. So when you reload, it'll have the two shots, right? Well, you'll notice after two seconds, a, a third shot will appear um, right above where those two slashes are. So you'll have three shots. So that's how you get three shots. And once again, you just do ability, shot, ability, shot, and then ability. Great sword. There we go. And you just start swinging away. That's the combo, baby. Oh, let me go out attributes. Jeez, almost forgot. All right, let me respect because I was doing something last night. So what I go with is the banana bread. It's going to give you 48 strength for 50 minutes. So I'm going to use that. And let me respec here. So initially what I would do is I would start off. I already know from my other gear. I would start off with this one. Here, I'll just do it. Pay the extra 200 gold, baby. Oop. So there we are. That's what I would go with on this. Um, you can go up if you want more damage, you can go up to a hundred. Um, so I would say three here. I would say 350 on the strength. If you wanted to go up to a hundred to do a little bit extra damage with the blunderbuss, you could run it like that. But really the first two dots is what's important on intelligence. 5% damage increased to backstabs and random critical hits. The random critical hits is, is, is big. So 5% damage to increase 5% damage increase to targets inflicted with a damage over time effect. So that's going to be the burn and the bleeds. So I would at least go to 50. If you do that, then you can go two, three, one, two, three. Yep. That's what I would go with. So if I assign that, you always want to check your boss gear. So that's on my main dungeon gear and it all looks great. But what you want to do is go to your boss gear and you notice the numbers drop off up here with the strength so now i will not get the 10 percent base damage increase to abilities in the final attack in the melee light chain that's big you don't want that and also i'm missing out on the second dot on intelligence so to properly do this i would just respect <clears throat> and what you ideally want to do is get two gear sets with the same stats so you don't have to do this or worry about it and then let's go ahead and get to 50. And let's take decks up. All right. And that's what I would go with for that. Now I do have two pieces that are con down here. <sighs> Does 50 con really matter in the final boss fights? I mean, you're still, you know, going to be a one shot probably, but a lot of times signing up for dungeons and public lobbies, what I've realized is that a lot of people that start the lobbies, which I don't always start my own lobbies. I don't feel like checking people's gear all the time. I like to go in random and just see what happens. They want you to be at least 50% con in a lot of the dungeons that I run here on Marma. So they see low con and they, man, I get messed all the time. And oh, I have bad experiences with, you know, 15 con or five con, you know, players. And so I just go 50 con. I'll sign up with this. So it looks legit, but my main class, I'll have 15 con. And then, um, that's how I'd set it up. So if we go back to my original class here, you'll see I'm 15 con. That's what I run the re regular dungeon with. And we're still good to go. We're over 350, so we get the extra ability damage and the melee damage. We're over 200, so we get the backstab damage, and we're over 50 here. So that's ideal. And that's how I set it up. That's my philosophies. And you got to remember the blunderbuss is a support weapon, so you don't want to stay on it. Use your abilities, get you your great sword, and do your major damage. That's what you want to do. All right, well, that about does it. Or maybe that does do it. And oh, one thing also with the earring on the second set, didn't get into. I have this earring 
and I would definitely recommend this. Find one with healthy toast, refreshing toast, and nimble because you're going to be dodging a lot, so you need the nimble to regain that stamina fast. You're going to be taking potions a lot, so you need refreshing toast. And healthy toast, when you drink a mana potion, it gives you an extra way of healing. It, you increase... You, uh, 15% of your base health. So it's real quick action too, but now I got four ways to heal instead of just three. So it's effective and I think it's definitely needed in the boss fights because health is a nonstop battle in there. All right, I think for now that does it. Let me know if you enjoyed it, how you ran it and what you think. If you made any improvements, let me know. Um, I'm not always right. I don't know everything. So I just try to do the best I can and any new knowledge that's better. I'll take advantage of it, learn from it and, and move on to it. So see you on the next video tomorrow. It will be the M3 running with pubs and me talking to you as the audience. All right, later.